Good day and welcome to Season 1, Episode 2 of the ODSP Performance Mini-Series. Today's uh, episode is on CDNs, the why and what. My name is Scott Stewart and I'm a Senior Program Manager in the OneDrive and SharePoint Engineering team. And what you'll see as part of these webcasts that we're doing is there'll be little 10-minute segments and this is the second one in the, in the first part of the series. Please continue to watch other ones if you wanted to go into deeper. As you'll see, as we progress into each one, they'll go deeper and deeper into different elements that we want to help you with or advise on what to do in your, for your SharePoint Online space. Right, so today's agenda. Why we use CDNs in SharePoint Online, how they work, identifying which SharePoint CDNs you use, and then the CDN command set. The deeper into the implementation and how to do that will be in the next episode. So first of all, why use CDN? If you look on the picture or in the graph, what you'll see is that, um, or in the map, should I say, you'll see that we have a United Kingdom location with a United Kingdom user. You have a United States user, if you look on the opposite side, and you have that your SharePoint farm is located within the United States, within North America. From that location, it looks around about probably the Chicago data center in this particular scenario. Now, if you have a look, we've got these long green lines, and those green lines illustrate the traffic or the long haul, as we'd like to put it, um, that a user would make when they make requests to SharePoint Online. Now, while what is important there is the first part is that we reuse pre-existing connections, so you don't have this additional handshakes and additional slow sort of um, traffic that would happen otherwise. What happens if I'm a user in the UK and I'm now going to request an image or a JavaScript file? Um, from or a job or a CSS file from SharePoint. If I pull it from a normal library, what will happen is you'll see it'll access the database. The database will then uh, stream it across and bring it back to the user and go all the way along and all the way back across the line until it eventually gets to the, the user in the UK. And you'll see the same effect will happen for the US user. You can imagine the experience, yes, it's a, oh, so what, it's a meg file, what's the big deal? Well, that meg has got to traverse the line for each and every single user in that space. Now, what happens if we implement CDNs? This changes now, and instead of the file now coming all the way back, because it, the CDN is in multiple locations around the world, and in fact, we have them in most cities around the world, you will see that the CDN would automatically, in the top right, you can see it there, that it would feed directly from the CDN to the user. What that means is there's less traffic flow along that line, it's less delay getting back to the user, and we see quite a significant improvement in speed. And the same effect would happen for the US user. Even though the distances might be, might be shorter, it is a case of being able to serve the CDN close to the location from the user. We all know that traffic close to you is a lot faster. So, Jumping straight in, now that you've seen how uh, what CDNs do for us, let's jump straight into what public CDNs are and how they work. Now, I know we haven't quite defined all the types. We'll get into the types shortly, but I wanted to cover a brief on how they work. And then we'll go into the different options and which one to use. I mean, that's, that's the ultimate question, right? So if you look at this diagram, and it is available online as well, it's, it looks a little bit more complicated than it is. First of all, a user makes a call. As you can see in step one, they make a call to SharePoint Online. That call then goes and says, hey, go and give me the CSS, the PNG, the JavaScript, the JPEG, whichever files it is, go and get those files for me. Now, those are things, could be a, a logo on the page. It could be the style sheet that you're using, as you can see, the CSS. And then the JS, which is a JavaScript file. And it could be either of those. It will then go and request it from the content delivery network. The content delivery network, if it's the first time it's, it's, it's being asked for that file, will request that file from SharePoint. SharePoint will then synchronize it, and within 15 minutes, it will have the file and will upload that file into the CDN. Now, in a public CDN, that location doesn't change, um, and that will then replicate around the world. So our CDN locations around the world will then be replicated to, so no matter where a user lives, they will then get it from the closest location to them. Now you might ask, what happens if it's not in the CDN yet? Well, then we'll serve it from the SharePoint library. And once it has synchronized into the CDN, it will then serve from the CDN from that point onwards. The only restriction on this is that it must you must be coming from a SharePoint referrer, in other words, a SharePoint page. Um, and bear in mind, this is public CDN. It doesn't mean that 
everyone can access it? Yes, if they had the URL directly, they could, provided they were coming from SharePoint. So yes, it is public. Keep that in mind, um, that if it's personal IP you don't want to put on there, totally understand that this is designed for site assets, and we'll see that as we go on. Right, what happens if we look at private CDN? A private CDN is a little different. As you'll see in point number one over there, it does make the request, go into SharePoint, it then goes and says, yes, give me the CSS, the PNG, the JavaScript file, JPEG, whichever one you want to do. And then it actually goes to the content delivery network. At that point, it actually goes to SharePoint and again goes through the same process of, hey, has the file been accessed yet? Yes, no, all right, go and put it into uh, the CDN and serve it from the CDN going forward. The difference with this is those CDN locations for private CDN are completely different from a URL perspective. And you'll see that as we get through the video, um, you'll actually see that what it looks like. Those cannot be accessed directly. And the reason I say that is they are actually generated URLs based on the cookie of the first user that accessed them, and they are only valid for 60 minutes. So if you try and hard code those every 60 minutes, the URL becomes invalid. Don't think that you can do it and, oh, it'll keep it. After 60 minutes, the URL is no longer available and you cannot access from that location. And this is why this is a private CDN. This is typically for assets that you want more higher level of security on. Um, you want permissions, for example, that, hey, we don't want all us or everything going uh, or being available. And if someone gets the URL, we don't want them to access it. Well, if they happen to get the URL and they have permissions, they will be able to get there without having gone from the location you specify. And you might say, well, that's not really private then, is it? Well, actually it is. Think about it. If I really wanted, if I was someone within your company and I really wanted to share that picture or that image or whatever that might be, I could simply take a picture of my phone and share it. In CDNs, you would have to physically go and copy this full long URL with the encryption or the cookie details in it completely in order to try and get to the, to, to the actual file. So it is a secure option that's offered. Now, CDNs, and perhaps something to mention is, those files physically live in the different locations wherever we, rep we replicate to. So if you've got data to residency concerns, um, today, those files that you put in there should not be things that are obviously restricted by data residency. Um, because if I have a user sitting within the United Kingdom, but my data residency is North America, when they access that, the first time they access it, it will be synchronized to the CDN uh, within the United Kingdom. So you need to obviously take that into consideration and verify that with your privacy department. Right, so which CDN should we use? First of all, we, there are more than public and private. Public and private are the Microsoft SharePoint ones offered in Office 365. You'll see there's a third one which I refer to as public common. And then this particular example, as you'll see in the bottom right, is an Ajax JavaScript file. Why access the JavaScript file from your, your own library? Why put it into your own CDN? There's no purpose behind that. Use the public common CDN. As you can see, the example there is ajax.aspnetcdn.com forward slash ajax and then the version of the file that you're needing to use. You'll see later on as we get into it, you'll see that it, it, it actually shows an example of why. Right, a couple of quick points. It's a tenant level. You control it with folders, otherwise known as origins. Um, when you turn it on by default, we have a couple of automatic ones, as you can see, auto origins. And then, of course, the HTTP2 protocol. This is a very important one. Um, it allows, it has more threads than six. HTTP 1.1 uses six threads. Um, and you'll see that it actually slows down uh, the, the page because it's waiting in line to queue up the, the responses. You have automatic URL rewrite we do on your behalf. Bear in mind, this is only for server side. For client side, um, that'll be in later chapters as we cover how to implement it for client-side code. Right now, it's server-side rewrites. It updates every 15 minutes around the world, and you have to have a SharePoint referrer. Public is site assets, uh, particular things like logos, CSS files, JavaScript files. Private is physical content. In other words, I've got my, we launched my new uniform, and it's very private within the company, and we want pictures of it. Therefore, uh, that should go into your private. And I've already been through the points on that. Right, so if we look at the URLs very quickly, you'll see that um, the public CDN one right in the beginning, um, you'll see in the top, it says publiccdn.shapeonline.com, and then it's actually the tenant name. For private, you'll notice it starts with privatecdn.shapeonline.com, and again, the tenant name. But you'll also notice to the end of it that it's got an eats and oats on here, 
and that's really just how it builds up and encrypts and this changes every 60 minutes as I mentioned. You'll also see that we have additional ones, for example, internal SVO CDNs. Those are internal, meaning those are static ones that we as Microsoft use uh, for some of the assets we obviously want to put in CDNs as well. And then the public common CDN example I showed you, I spoke to you about for the jQuery, you'll notice it takes one and a half seconds to load from your SharePoint library. But if we pull it from the default uh, or from the location from jQuery, it takes 469 milliseconds in this example. That's a saving of over a second. Now imagine five of those files. That's five seconds that you will cost your page by simply not optimizing what's there. And then SharePoint CDNs and the SharePoint framework, not going to touch too much on this, but basically when you use the SharePoint framework and you have CDNs enabled, by default, we have the client side assets, a library or folder put into the CDN and you'll see that the JavaScript files that you upload will automatically go there for you. And then just closing out, I'm not going to touch too much on this as well as we cover it later. Yeah, this is just the CDN command set. And in the coming videos, I'll take you through how to actually configure them. All right, and at the end, as, as always, we'll have our helpful links at the end of all of our sessions. And um, thank you very much for your time today.